So first of all, why should you improve your Google Analytics skills? Why, why spend time on this? I think this quote sums it up kind of nicely. The quote says, the goal is to turn data into information and information into insight. So what's the difference though between data and information and information and insight? Well, data is just a bunch of characters, really. Letters, numbers, not necessarily organized in any meaningful way. So that's data. But when you do organize them in a meaningful way, you then have information. And with information, you can gain insight by using the data, if it's structured in the right way, to answer questions. For example, question. Do organic search visitors engage with our website more so than paid search users? Well, the gobbledygook of data and letters and numbers is not in any particular order, doesn't answer that question, but structured in the right way, in the right type of report, that question can be answered. Yes, organic users bounce less, stay longer, and consume more content. And the insight that can be gained from that is then more in our SEO. So that's why it's worth spending time on getting better at Google Analytics so that you can turn your data into information and your information into real actionable business insight that will actually help you make more money or achieve more of your goals, whatever they are. So to do that, to turn data into information and into information into ins insight, specifically within Google Analytics, the information needs to be three things. It needs to be accurate, it needs to be comprehensive, and it needs to be segmented in a way those are the three types of things I'm going to do my best to show you how to do today. So we're going to talk about how to make your data more accurate by doing things like checking your tracking code implementation to make sure that your, the data that's being collected is accurate. Removing self-referral issues, and I'll explain what that means. Cross-domain tracking, I'll explain what all of these things mean. Removing internal traffic and removing referral spam. We'll also talk about making your data more comprehensive through conversion tracking and event tracking. And we'll talk about how your data to answer questions through secondary dimensions, custom segments, custom, custom dashboards. So it's a lot, so let's get right to it. But before we get right to it, I want to make sure that this thing is clear because I'm going to refer to things like account and property. I'm sure I quickly touch upon what the difference between those are. So in Google Analytics, if you go into your admin section, you'll see three columns. And very lightly at the top in gray, it says account, property, and view. So the difference is that one Google Analytics account, which is really just associated like with your, your email address, your Google email that you log in with, one account can host data for multiple websites. So that's the second column. And then one website can have multiple it's kind of sliced and diced and reported on in different ways. So one account can have multiple properties, typically means multiple websites, and then one website or one property can have multiple views to slice and dice the data in. Does that kind of make sense? All right, good. So let's get to making your data more accurate. First and foremost, definitely check your tracking code implementation. The proper way to implement Google Analytics tracking code on a website is that a single copy of the tracking code must be placed before closing head tag, ideally uh, right after the opening head tag, so before the closing one, ideally right after the opening head tag, in the header of the site. It's a very common thing, actually, for two copies of the Google Analytics tracking script to get injected into the website. The original web developer of a site may have manually put it into the template, and then someone else added it. Just go to your website and view source and make sure you only have one, and that it is before the closing head tag, ideally right after the closing head tag. Even easier, though, you can use this Chrome extension called Google Tag Assistant, and just see if you, so you install that Chrome extension, go to your website, and then run that Tag Assistant, and see if you get a red frowny face or a green smiley face. <laughs> to make sure, and actually, even if you visually code through the view source thing in the browser, I'd still recommend doing this because just looking at it won't tell you if it's missing like a comma or a period or something that your eye may miss and it's not actually working correctly and communicating with the server correctly. So highly recommend Google Tag Assistant for checking the implementation of the code. 
All right, next up in the realm, we're going to talk about self-referral issues. So self-referral traffic, and you look at your referral sources, which is supposed to tell you traffic from your own website, coming to your own website. That's obviously Sessions being double counted, conversion tracking, accuracy issues, all sorts of issues you don't want to see. So if you see that, or even if you don't, as a preemptive measure, it's a good thing to filter out referral, self-referral traffic. Or maybe you shouldn't say filter out. You want to add your own domain name to what's called the referral exclusion list. So in that admin interface, under the property column one in the middle, there is something under the tracking info header, something called referral exclusion Main name there so that you don't have self referral issues. But like deleting exclude real data that you shouldn't be excluding or deleting? No. And so it's saying to Google Analytics if you see one session that is already on my website and then for some reason that session. entry and double count, it's just going to unify puzzle pieces and put them back together. And you actually want to do this too with PayPal, or if you have you're integrating your site with like a Shopify cart or something, uh, it leave to go finish. Another session from especially problematic because then all of the sales and the revenue numbers, if you have oh, that's not where they originally came from, and you can't learn much from that. You need SEO, paid search, social media. You need to know exactly where they did come from in the first place, not that they came from gave you money. So. You want to add your third-party external payment gateways to the referral as well. All right, next up in the accuracy category is cross-domain tracking. So what that means is if you have multiple websites, but users that tend to travel between, so in this very simplistic example, it says our site.com, our career site.com, and then our site.com. So if someone goes to your main site, but then you have like a separate careers website, and they go there, but then they come back, that can lead to similar issues to what I was just talking about before, too, because it's really the same user, and it's really the same session, but it's going to get counted as new people coming in, and then another new coming in, and vice versa. So you can set up cross-domain tracking to avoid those issues. And real quick overview of what that looks like. In cross-domain tracking, multiple web property code on multiple Individual properties are for individual websites in Google Analytics, but there is to the same property code on multiple different called a linker plugin. It's just a little additional piece of script, and that link will tell you more about it. That then you can actually put the same property tracking code on multiple different websites, and it's good in this use case because then you won't have the sessions being split and divided, it will all look the same. They'll know, Google Analytics will know that it's the same user traveling amongst multiple websites. And then you can set up separate views to place that property into this website only, this website only. You can see it however you want. Use case where typically pro individual properties are individual websites. One use case where it does actually make sense to have one Google Analytics property be used on multiple websites. All right, and another item is removing internal traffic. So yourself, your staff, your freelancers, those users will use your necessarily reflect that of your actual prospects. Your users differently than the external 
users that are which are the ones you really want to learn about. So you want to get yourself and your team's data usage of your website out of your account. Easiest way to do that, again, a Chrome extension. This one's called the Google Analytics opt-out add-on. If you go to the Chrome extension store, you add this Google Analytics add-on and enable it, that's it. You're now not counted in Google Analytics. When you go to your own website, else's website, but since we're on our own website, and now we're not counted, for them either, so we shouldn't be doing that. So that's the easiest way. Um, you can also filter out by IP, and if you have a static IP and you know what it is, admin section and filter out your IP your freelancer's home office or whatever it may be, um, so change. One quick note about filtering, if you do this or any other kind of create an unfiltered view as a backup. If you go into the admin and you use the actual filtering capability on a view or a property or anything, once you filter data out, it's gone forever. And if you make a little mistake, and accidentally filter out more than just that one IP address that you meant to filter out or whatever it may be, that data is gone forever. So always, always, always make a view. Again, account, one account can have multiple properties, multi, and a single property can have multiple views. So your one website Google Analytics tracking code can be sliced and diced into multiple views. If you're going to filter out your IP address from your main view, make sure to also create a backup view that has no filters whatsoever, just in case, because it, it definitely happens that mistakes are made when filters are created and you want that unfiltered backup view. All right, last but certainly not least is referral spam. Um, how many people have heard of referral spam? Okay, all right, maybe a third or so. Um, annoying, right? <laughs> yeah, so for those that aren't aware, Spammers have figured out how to spam us in almost every area of our lives, our cell phones, our email, our regular phones, whatever, direct mail. It's like you're just hit with spam all the time, and now it can even happen inside of your Google Analytics account. So spammers have figured out how to send what is essentially fake traffic to your Google Analytics account, making it look like someone visited your website coming from their website, like the, making it look like they referred traffic to you, when they really didn't. They just want their website to show up in your referral very often. Just so you click on that link and check it out. And it really works because every single person that I've talked to that spots it, they're like, what is that? I don't know. I've never heard of that. They're sending us traffic. Let me check it out. It, it could be. It could be. So it could be dangerous to check it out. One of the telltale signs that's not always there, but one of the telltale signs of a referral source being uh, referral spam is a 100% bounce rate, a perfect 1.0 uh, average pages per session, and a zero second, zero minute, zero hour average session duration. That's kind of a telltale sign that it's bot traffic. All those spammers referral have gotten really good at actually spoofing those numbers as well. So it won't always look like that. So how do you filter it out if it's, there's no real sign? Um, again, always, always filter this out. But this has got the pretend to be an expert at this. He is the expert. It. You can, if you want. You can follow his instructions for how to do it. Because this is what happens. As soon as you figure out which one. So he's on top of which ones to filter out his blog. So that's the DIY. Maintain your own filters for free that way. The service to take care of it.
And yeah, you use them. Yeah, so it's it's worth it sometimes. Pay as much to get that done. So not easy to get your numbers, but it's important to do so because it does skew the site-wide averages. If you're so your boss, your clients, or whatever that you don't have a session duration, and all this bot traffic's coming in and messing that up for your site-wide averages, then you know to achieve your goals and to know what's what part of what and what's not so all right that's how to make a whole ways to make your data ways to make it more comprehensive first of all conversion tracking if a lot of you probably have this set up already but if you don't definitely want to convert which Mind. I mean, like a real action. Someone has done an action to either give you money or give you or maybe an order or visiting the con not a conversion. That is not an action that turned someone, that converted. I don't consider that a conversion, and it's a little bit of a peeve that I see that a lot. So, Or spending a certain amount of time on a convert themselves to a lead. But if they filled out a form or they made a purchase so that you can learn more about what's working, it's on your website. So. Form tracking is one of the most common you uh, have to track. So how do you do that? The easy URL, and then if it does, you can go into Google Analytics under and the, and set up a goal for to. One can get to that confirmation URL is no index. That was a complete. Cell. So that's the easy way. That doesn't work for. So you may have to do it another way, which is um, through Tag Manager. Uh, sorry, that is not the form that I, the slide that I was looking for. This one. Actually, I'll go back to this first. So, form fills the easy way. Thank you, page confirmation URL. E-commerce tracking is another thing you definitely want to track, and the easy way to do that e-commerce tracking means really gave money. There was a transaction and revenue. Easy way in this world, WooCommerce. There is a plugin for WooCommerce, the uh, enhanced e-commerce tracking plugin. Take care of that for you. That's the really easy way. Um, so, advanced ways that you can't just simply redirect to a thank you URL, or for e commerce tracking where you can't just simply use the visit these URLs here. Basically, both of them use Google Tag Manager to complete those goals, but they're um, a lot more complicated than the first two options. So, if you can, on a form, Redirect it to a thank you URL, set up your you can for e commerce. If you can use the WooCommerce extension, just do that and be done. But if you have to, those are links that you can consult the more way. All right, so there may be other actions that you want to track that aren't true conversions, but are very important actions and that are part of. convert and become a lead. What you want to use to track those actions is event tracking. So event tracking can be used to track pretty much anything that's not already tracked by default analytics, such as video views. Uh, you can use uh, for YouTube and there's instructions. If someone would know whether they pause the video or play the video all the way through and so on, make clicks on mail call links or outbound links 
actions that aren't tracked by default by Google Analytics, but you can set up with and clicks on images or other elements, it's just any, really anything else, and knowing if they click, travel from one page to another within your site, but it doesn't tell you what page they clicked or if they clicked and went. Um, so that's very interesting information, event tracking. But again, those aren't conversion. So I recommend those actions be tracked as events and actual conversions or say as goals, real conversions. All right, last but not least, this fire hose of information. <laughs> How to segment your data to answer your questions. All right, my favorite is a very simple thing called second name, but it's a simple thing. It's basically, um, well, it's, so here's a use case for it. If I'm looking, and this actually happened, making these slides, I was looking at our data, and I'm like, hmm, our careers page is one of our top, most popular landing pages. I wonder where all the traffic is coming from to that page. So I wanted to know my traffic sources, not for my whole site, but just that page. So I clicked into that page, drilled down to that page, and by default, it didn't tell me this second column here, but secondary dimensions, uh, a quick nickname or thing, trick you can use, is it's, it adds a secondary column to the report that you're looking at to break down the data further uh, from what you're already looking at. So you've got your careers page that I drilled into already, and then this drop down that says secondary dimension is at the top of pretty much every report you're looking at in Google Analytics. Hit secondary dimension, it adds a secondary column, and you pick what you want to break it down by. So I said source medium of the traffic and the type of the traffic. And so, boom, boom, like two seconds where the traffic was coming from to that page by adding a AKA secondary column. That's my favorite quick and dirty trick for segmenting data to answer a question on the fly very quickly. But sometimes you may need to look at a whole variety of different reports, but still like for a single thing. So if you need to look at like all the reports that are in Google Analytics, but through a lens, like a, just a certain type of traffic, just a certain region, just a certain section of the site, but you want to see, you're curious about all of it for just that type, custom segments is really handy for that. So that allows you to view all of the, a filtered lens that you set up. So for example, again with our career section, I can create a segment to view activity on our careers pages through all the different kinds of reports that are in there. But I, want, I won't, don't want to see the whole site's stats. I just want to see the stats for the careers section on all the different reports. So to do that, I create a custom segment. So I give it a name at the top. Well, first of all, I hit add, add segment. So you'll see this at, also at the top of pretty much every report is that uh, drop down type thing there that will typically say all users, but you can hit add segment and create a new segment. And so I gave it a name, career section of site, and then you tell it under conditions what you want to filter it by. What do you want that lens to be that you're going to look at all the reports through? So I said filter by page URL contains career. And then I'm able to see any report on the whole Google Analytics through that lens of just people who went to the careers section, any careers page, but now those are the metrics that I'm looking at and nothing else is in there. Again, you can do that for certain regions, certain browser, certain anything. Anything you want to just filter it down to, you can create a custom segment, apply the segment, look at all the reports through that segment. And then you can do multiple. So if I wanted to compare users of the careers section of the site to users of the resources, I can create those two segments and put them with the whole Google PageSpeed algorithm update thing is we've been making segments for US mobile traffic and US desktop traffic for clients that want to measure page speed of US users, mobile versus desktop. And then we can look at all reports through those two lenses at the same time. It's pretty cool. But custom segments, you have to apply them every time you go in or remember to take them off to you know, remember that you're looking at things through a very 
off. So they're a temporary lens that you put on to look at things through, and you have to remember to take them off or put them on again. If you're using the same custom set, putting it on all the time, you may want to make a custom report instead. Custom reports are great for slicing and dicing data in a way that answers your specific questions in your specific way. So under the customization tab, which is on like the left menu column, go to custom reports and create a custom report, give it a name, and select what you want to be on the report. Now, one thing that's kind of confusing dimensions versus metrics, and when you try to there, or you can't put a metric there. The easy way to remember what a the dimensions, basically the thing that you want to think, what do I want in the first for that? So hopefully that helps you demystify language and any issues you may run into building a custom report. Dimension first column, the subsequent columns. And then filters are whatever you want to narrow the traffic. So I want just organic traffic, or I want just paid search traffic, that whatever you want it to just show you, that would be the filter. And custom reports are pretty huge. Like standard reports, they can be scheduled, mailed out to you automatically, so you don't have to go in and look at them all the time. So that Something comes in handy. All right, last way data change. So similar to the custom reports that we just talked about, quicker way of seeing a lot of little snippets. Time you can build a custom dashboard. So it's great for like quick checking on things, just kind of quick overviews of a variety of hand-picked metrics that may not be on the same report elsewhere in, in Google Analytics. Uh, custom dashboards, you can start with a, again, they're in the customization section. So on the left uh, hand column, go to customizations, custom dashboards. You can start with a blank. Or there's this thing called the solutions gallery for Google Analytics that has um, a lot of pre-built dashboards that are pretty and edit them. So that's, uh, the, typically there's probably one kind of simple Go browse through there and see if there's a dashboard close enough to what you need, and then just make widgets for whatever metric you're curious about and just build your little squares into your dashboard that will allow you to quickly check in on a variety of time. All right, so to summarize, effectively turn data into information. Can answer questions. Fire hosed a lot of different ways to you. I know that was quick. That was a lot. I am going to go to the happiness bar and this, but I think we have a few minutes for five minutes for questions now. Sure. Uh, so the question for those who can hear is about sharing. So if you create a custom dashboard, custom segment, custom report, how do you share it with others? Uh, so certain things are tied to your account, and certain things are tied. Most of those things we talked about are tied to your account, though. So if you have access to a client's property using your account, and they have access to the same property using their account, if you create, a, for example, a custom segment, and that won't automatically be in their account, but you can share it with them. They actually just have to import it. So when you go to the customization section where you made it in the first place, there'll be a share URL, gives you a, or share button, sorry, gives you a URL to send to them to import the custom thing that you made, and then it's in their account as well. Um, so different things are tied to different levels, so check out the documentation for exactly what's tied to what, but um, custom reports and custom segments are two things that are, I know are tied to the account level. 
Dashboards, off the top of my head, I'm actually blanking on that. I think it's also the account level, but double check their documentation to be sure. We, we haven't shared those as much as we do the segments in the report. Yes. Two questions. Uh, one is additional Mm, excellent questions. Okay, for those who couldn't hear, the questions were about where do you go for additional training to go really in depth with all these things, and um, where to, whether to implement Google Analytics code directly or through Google Tag Manager. So first of all, the training. Uh, there's a lot of resources out there. I mean. For quick setups of a single thing, their doc Google Analytics own documentation is pretty good. I put a lot of links in there to that. Um, they also, though, have the Google Analytics Academy. So you can watch videos like it's an actual course that Google themselves that puts out for getting trained on uh, Google Analytics. And there's a certification you can take, too, which is actually, I think, a good learning experience, even if you don't need to be certified in Google Go, It's like an open book test. So to just go through that certification practice with the open book thing is pretty educational. Um, and then of course there's online courses like everywhere. But I usually tell people to start with this straight from Google resources. And then as far as implementing the code directly or through Tag Manager, um, Tag Manager is not easy or intuitive to learn. But if someone is comfortable tracking scripts for page speed optimization, slightly better. Not to inject third-party scripts with Tag Manager, if you can. Instead of every single page. But it's a, neg I don't want to say negligible difference, but it's a, not a huge difference, so if you have to put it in the header. Yes, there is Google, uh, WordPress plugins that will help you set up Tag Manager. Um, there's one in particular, Tom Dur Durcell. It looks like Duracell, but it's not Duracell. Um, there's a Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager plugin by Tom Dura something. Um, all right, I think uh, do we have maybe one more one more question? Okay. If, sorry, I didn't catch all of that. A domain that forwards to another domain, like a automatically redirects. OK, so if you have one URL that automatically redirects to another URL, you don't need Google Analytics code on both, because essentially no user ever actually visits the first one. So you really would just be you know, tracking everything on the second one. Oh, it should add it to the referral exclusion list. Um, I believe if it automatically redirects, it actually won't show up, and you won't need to do that. Um, certainly double check on me <laughs> and look on that, because I haven't dealt with that that much. But I'm pretty sure it doesn't actually show up as, the, as a referral source when, during a 301 redirect. Um, so I don't think you would have to. But again, preemptively, it's always a good idea to add things there that you know you don't want counted or the sessions you wanted unified, so you could do it as a preemptive measure, but I don't think you have to. How do you see search keywords? How do you see search keywords? Excellent question. Um, you kind of can't anymore, unfortunately. Uh, not in Google Analytics. So several years ago, Google, uh, for reasons they claim were to do with privacy and security that are totally debatable, anyway, they... <laughs> <laughs> they took the keyword data, so like keywords from search engines that were sending traffic, which keywords were people using to send traffic to you. They took that data and anonymized most of it into a bucket that just says not provided. So the keywords report's still in there, but you won't see much in it. It just attributes everything to not provided. But there's another tool that Google puts out called Search Console, formerly known as Webmaster Tools. I know, I know. Where they can give it to you there and not there. Like, I, yeah. So. There's a lot of background and conspiracy theories about that, but <laughs> unfortunately, that's the way it is as of today. So that's all the time I have right here. I will go to the happiness bar and answer any other questions anyone has. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this was helpful.